you can multiply one vector by another. But the result is not a new vector. Rather, the result is actually a scalar quantity. In other words, a number. When you multiply two vectors together, the result is referred to as the scalar product, the inner product, or, more commonly, the dot product. In this video, you'll learn how to calculate the dot product of two vectors and why you might want to do it. Let's look at some examples. Here's a two-dimensional vector called A with values 3 and 5. And this one is called B with values 8 and 2. To calculate the dot product, we multiply together the corresponding components of each vector. In this case, 3 times 8 and 5 times 2. Then we add the individual products together. The dot product of these two vectors is therefore the scalar value 34. Here's an example with some negative numbers. Applying the same method, the dot product this time is the scalar value minus 14. And here's another example, again in two dimensions. Notice that we generally write the multiplication symbol as a dot, which is why this is called the dot product. If we label the components of each vector u1, u2, v1 and v2, then, algebraically, we can describe the method for calculating the dot product like this. The very same principle applies to three-dimensional vectors as well. The dot product is still just the sum of the products of corresponding components. These two vectors have a dot product of 103. Algebraically, we can say this. Indeed, the same principle applies in any number of dimensions. Needless to say, to obtain the dot product of two vectors, they must have the same number of dimensions. So you can see, calculating the dot product of two vectors is a piece of cake. As long as you can multiply and add numbers together, all you have to do is follow a simple recipe. But you have to ask the question, why would you ever want to calculate the dot product of two vectors? What does the dot product actually tell us? Well, the answer is that the dot product allows us to compare the directions of two vectors. This has applications in computer graphics, machine learning and quantum computing. Consider these two vectors. They have different magnitudes, but they point in the same direction. This is easier to see when they have the same origin. Their dot product is 15. Now, let's change the direction of one of them slightly. Its magnitude has not changed. The coordinates at the tip of this vector are different, so their dot product is now 13.85. Let's change the direction a little more. The dot product is 10.6. Change the direction some more and the dot product is now 5.75. It's getting smaller as the angle between the two vectors gets bigger. Increase the angle some more and the dot product continues to shrink. Notice that when the vectors are at right angles to each other, that is, when they are orthogonal, the dot product is zero. If we continue to change the direction, the dot product continues to get smaller, but now it has a negative value, minus 10.6. And the value grows more negative as the angle between these two vectors gets even bigger. When the vectors are pointing in completely opposite directions, the dot product is minus 15. Remember, it was positive 15 when they pointed in the same direction. Change the direction some more and the difference between the directions of the vectors begins to decrease. The dot product is becoming less negative now. It's minus 10.6 again. Once again, when the vectors are orthogonal, the dot product is zero. Beyond this, the dot product becomes positive again. Once again, the dot product of these two vectors is positive 10.6. So you can see, the dot product is a measure of how much the two vectors point in the same direction, or indeed, it's a measure of how much they point in opposite directions. A large positive dot product 
means they have very similar directions. A large negative dot product means they have very different directions. Any two vectors that are orthogonal will always have a dot product of zero. This means that their directions have no particular similarity and no particular dissimilarity. Theoretically, when two vectors are orthogonal, their directions bear no relationship to each other at all. Being able to check for orthogonality is particularly important, for example when comparing the angular momentum of subatomic particles. Another way to think of the dot product is to imagine a light being shone at right angles to one of the vectors, like this. Here the short vector is casting a shadow onto the long one. The short vector is effectively being projected onto the long one. In fact, this is called an orthogonal projection, because the imaginary light is at right angles to one of the vectors. The bigger the angle between them, the smaller the shadow becomes. A long shadow means they have more of the same direction in common. A short shadow means they have less of the same direction in common. If you examine the way we calculated the dot product originally, you should be able to see that we can also arrive at the dot product by simply multiplying the length of the projection by the length of the vector that it was projected onto. When the two vectors are orthogonal, there's no shadow at all. A geometric vector is after all just a directed line segment, and a line segment has no width, only length. The length of the projection is therefore zero, and so is the dot product. Beyond an angle of 90 degrees, we can still apply the principle of orthogonal projection and use the length of the projection to calculate the dot product. But of course, the torch analogy doesn't really make sense now, because we're not actually projecting one vector onto another. Rather, we're projecting one vector onto the line occupied by the other. As you can see, the length of the projection now has a negative value, and therefore so does the dot product. By the way, you can project either one of the vectors onto the line occupied by the other. You'll get the same result when you calculate the dot product using the length of this projection, because the dot product is a measure of how much of either one of the vectors is pointing in the same direction as the other. And just to be clear, if the directions of both vectors were altered by the same amount, their dot product would remain the same. It's as if you were rotating the entire coordinate basis that they share. The dot product is a measure of the similarity or difference in the direction of two vectors relative to each other. But the value of the dot product on its own has a big limitation. Ultimately, it depends on the magnitudes of the two vectors being compared, not just their directions. These two vectors have a dot product of 30, which, for this pair of vectors, means that they point in the same direction. But these two vectors also have a dot product of 30, and clearly they point in different directions. If you need to compare the directions of multiple vectors, you really need to look at something that has nothing to do with their magnitudes. One thing you could do is calculate the angle between each pair of vectors. I'll show you how to do this in the next video.